Imagine with me, if you will, this scenario. You're spending a quiet Sunday afternoon at home, alone or with your family. You're in a state of peace and thankfulness, seated in your favorite chair, sipping a hot cup of tea. The sun is pouring its divine light through the living room window. Your spouse is napping blissfully on the couch. The kids are playing in their room upstairs. Life is good. And because you are a follower of Jesus, you recognize that God is good. It says in James 1.17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Oh, but then there is a pounding at your front door. This is an aggressive knock you associate with those police shows on television. Only now they are knocking on your front door. Your spouse was jolted awake by the pounding and the kids have come downstairs wondering about all the noise. You pull yourself up and cautiously approach the door, but before you can open it, two soldiers, yes, soldiers, kick the door in, submachine guns in hand. They grab you violently and militantly tell you not to resist. Two more soldiers cascade past you and grab your spouse and your children. Before you realize this nightmare is really happening, you and your family are thrown into the back of a huge armored vehicle parked outside. Inside the locked and secured vehicle are people just like you. Multiple families and the elderly and babies all collected and herded en route to a terrifying destination unknown. You now call to mind that the Holocaust, millions of Jews herded together on cargo trucks and transported to concentration camps where they would serve as slaves until incineration day. You recall news stories about thousands of innocent children in Catholic residential schools herded together, executed, and thrown into giant graves. Only scant remains to be discovered decades later. And you remember yesterday's news about Russian soldiers herding together innocent Ukrainian civilians and executing them their blood in the dirt, testifying to their brave fight to preserve peace in their native land. In today's lesson, we see one of the earliest examples of the atrocity of human herding in the book of Amos. And how our God hates it and exacts perfect justice against it. I'm Reverend Darren, and this is The Teaching Room. I want to welcome you. We have a website with all of our spiritual resources on it, uh, www.reverenddarren.com. I hope you will avail yourself of these free resources. They are for the body of Christ. Also, if you're watching this YouTube channel and you're getting something out of it, for your walk and your witness in Jesus. Please subscribe to this channel and certainly tell others about it. Today we are in a very uh, serious mode, a serious book of the Bible, the book of Amos. A common farmer, a common fig farmer, shepherd, and part-time prophet says in Amos 1 6 check this out thus saith the Lord 
for three transgressions of Gaza, and for four I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because they carried away captive the whole captivity to deliver them up to Edom. A modern version says, this is what the Lord says, for three sins of Gaza, even for four, I will not relent because she took captive whole communities, hurting them, whole communities, and sold them to Edom. Thus saith the Lord. The irreversible judgment of God over Gaza in the Philistine Empire. A nation that refused to repent and turn from their evil ways. It says there, for three sins of Gaza, even for four. This is another way of saying intentional, continual sin and sins, plural. Many sins. The cup of iniquity overflows. God's judgment is aroused with no repentance. There's no turning back God's judgment now. Beloved, let us never get to that place of hard-heartedness. It says in Hebrews 3.14, for we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. It goes on to say, While it is said today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness, and to whom swear he that they should never enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Their hearts were hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Let us never get to that place of separating off from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Rather, let us abide, let us remain in Jesus. It says in John 15, 7, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory. To my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This may well be the greatest challenge of the Christian life. Remaining in Christ. Let me say that again. This may well be the greatest challenge of the Christian life. Remaining in Christ. Not wavering. Not compromising. Not running ahead or lagging behind walking in step with God. <sighs> Let's encourage one another to do just that, as it says in Hebrews 3.13. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. That's our, our mission statement for uh, our website, for the teaching room. Wow. Regarding the nature of the sins of the Philistines, I want you to listen to this short commentary from Vernon McGee. It says, The judgment against the Philistines was for making slaves. They took a certain number of Israelites and they sold them into slavery to Edom and also to Phoenicia. The Phoenicians were great traders, and they in turn sold them as prisoners of war into slavery. They would send them all over the Mediterranean world. Because of this, God says that he intends to judge Philistia. The judgment of God came upon these places exactly as God said it would. He said, I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof, 
In the historical record of the reign of Hezekiah, we read, He, Hezekiah, smote the Philistines, even unto Gaza, and the borders thereof, from the tower of the watchman to the fenced city. That's 2 Kings 18.8, if you want to look that up. The record goes on to say how Hezekiah destroyed all that particular area. Amos's prophecy, you see, was literally fulfilled. This example of fulfilled prophecy makes this section particularly interesting. It also puts down a pattern for the way in which God will fulfill prophecy in the future. How do we know that a prophetic uttering is true? It comes to pass. Simple as that. I want to say this at this point in our teaching today. Human history bears this out. God hates human herding. Human history bears this out. God hates human herding. Why? Why? Because every human being God ever created, yes, you, you and I, included here, is individually loved and precious in his sight, made on purpose for a purpose. It says in Psalm 139, For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. If you don't know your value today in God's eyes, revisit Psalm 139, revisit those words, marinate in those words, meditate on them day and night, memorize them, get them into your head and your heart. God loves you individually. Amen. Amos 1, 7 is our next verse today. But I will send a fire on the wall of Gaza, which shall devour the palaces thereof. Modern rendition says, I will send fire on the walls of Gaza that will consume her fortresses. Yes, folks, this is literal fire. It's literal fire. God's perfect justice is carried out with consuming fire. God is a consuming fire, as we learned last week. There would not be a remnant left from this inferno. God devoured Gaza like a ferocious lion bent on avenging wrongs done. Who were they done against? God himself. When we sin, we're sinning against God, our creator, God our Father. Amos 1-2 from last uh, week says, He said, The Lord roars from Zion and thunders from Jerusalem. The pastures of the shepherds dry up and the top of Carmel withers. There's that lion, that lion from two weeks ago. I, <laughs> is this amazing? God, the lion of justice, arising and exacting justice on the land, on the enemy. Amos 1, 8 our last verse for today. And I will cut off the inhabitant from Ashdod and him that holdeth the scepter from Ashkelon, and I will turn mine hand against Ekron, and the remnant of the Philistines shall perish, saith the Lord God. Modern version says, I will destroy the king of Ashdod and the one who holds the scepter in Ashkelon. I will turn my hand against Ekron till the last of the Philistines are dead, says the sovereign Lord. So Amos here is delivering God's message of judgment straight up. 
There's no ear tickling going on here. Gaza, Ashdod, Ashkelon, and Ekron, four of the five major cities of Philistia, were longtime bullies and enemies of Israel and would receive in full the, the wages of their sin against God's people. As history now tells the story, the entire nation of Philistia would be destroyed for its sins. The entire nation leveled by the Lion of Justice. God himself devoured the land because of sin. Because of sin. Well, as it turns out, as you were watching this or, or, or reading the study, you are still safe and secure in your home right now. No actual enemy at the front door. But we see the end times unfolding before us, don't we? <laughs> we see it coming. All the signs are there. All the signs are there. We know from God's word that we must be ready for things to get worse before they get better. For our Jesus, beloved, our Jesus is returning. I'll leave you with this scripture today. Luke 21. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming, in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. Amen and amen. God willing, we will see you next week on the teaching room as we continue this sojourn through the book of Amos. God bless you.